fibers! The use of hair and fibers as evidence is based on French criminologist Dr. Edmund Lockhart's 1910 theory of transfer. His theory states that when a person comes into contact with another person or place, some fibers in human hair will be transferred to that person and that place. The theory states also that these hairs and fibers are easily <coughs> shed, so if found on an individual, they will reflect the most recent contact between the individual and individual and another person or place. March 1975. A 15-year-old Michigan girl disappeared and was never seen alive again. She had been about to testify against two men with whom she had been involved in a bad check scam. In April, one of the two men was sentenced to prison for an unrelated crime. Ten years later, the other man claimed the first man had strangled the girl in his car, shot her in the head, then buried her somewhere in the woods. Hey. On the basis of his oh. testimony, the first man, out of prison by now, was convicted of murdering the girl. The first man appealed, claiming the second man killed her, according to his story, in August 1975, while he, while he himself was in prison. The second man threw the girl off a railroad trestle on the rocks below, then buried her in the area. He even told authorities where her body had been buried. Her skeletal remains were found exactly where she, he said. There was no bullet hole in her head, but the absence of gunshot wounds still did not prove who killed her. Which man was telling the truth? Another difference in the conflicting stories was the month the murder occurred, March or August. Scraps of the victim's decayed clothing and several pounds of soil found at the gravesite were submitted to the FBI forensic lab for testing. The girl had been buried in a swampy area where there would normally be hordes of insects in August, but none in March when the ground would be frozen. Further, if the scraps of clothing proved to be winter clothes, she had probably been buried in March, not August. Laboratory tests showed there was no insect activity in the soil, and that the girl had been wearing heavy clothing. The first man was the murderer. Sometimes, fiber analysis can prove to be very strong evidence in a case. This was particularly true in the case of the abduction and murder of Christine Harrison in Ohio in 1982. The young girl was raped, murdered, and left in a field about 30 miles from her home. The forensic investigators on the scene found orange fibers in her hair. These fibers were polyester and had a distinctive shape, a shape similar to fibers used in carpet. These fibers were relatively unique. Because of their color and shape, they were also similar to the orange fibers found on a 12-year-old girl found murdered in the months prior in the same general area. Initially, these orange fibers did not lead investigators anywhere. A few months later, a young woman was abducted by a man and held hostage in his home where he tortured her and indicated that he planned to kill her. She was able to escape and went to the police. On an investigation, it was observed that he drove a van similar to the one a witness had reported Christine Harrison had been forced into. The van had a unique orange carpet in the back. On analysis, the fibers matched those found on Harrison's hair. 
The color of this fiber was so unique that the lab was able to identify the dye used and trace it to a specific carpet manufacturer. Less than 75 yards of this carpeting had been shipped to this particular area of Ohio. This greatly limited the number of potential suspects, eventually in conjunction with other evidence that provided a strong link to the owner of this fan, he was convicted of the murder of the 11-year-old girl. Oh, you touch my ta -la -la. On December 3rd, 1989, five-year-old Melissa Brennan disappeared from a Christmas party in Fairfax, Virginia. A man named Carl Hughes had left the party at the same time. When police arrived at Hugh's home to question him, he was washing the clothes he had worn at the party. An odd thing to do at one in the morning. Hughes became a prime suspect. They swiped transparent tape over a car seat, picking up thousands of hairs and fibers. Blue sweater? Searching for evidence that Melissa had been in the car. Yeah, I'm gonna need some backup over here if I'm something. Three alleyway, 19. Melissa has been wearing a blue sweater and several blue acrylic fibers were found in Hugh's car. The investigator was discussing the case with his wife who remembered an old J.C. Penny catalog she had saved that featured children's clothing. In the catalog was a picture of the outfit. It had been manufactured only for J.C. Penny, and it was only advertised in this one catalog. The investigator contacted J.C. Penny, and they obtained one of the outfits from a customer in another state. Get some milk for me, Gregory! Okay. There are, there are more than 1,000 man-made fibers currently manufactured and more than 7,000 different dyes. So the chances that two dyed synthetic fibers from different sources would match. Workers in the forensic lab brought Cal in any acrylic clothing ma they own. A total of 7,938 comparisons were made of 126 different blue acrylic fibers. All from different people. No two fibers could be matched under the microscope. Cal Hughes' statement that that he had not spoken with to Melissa or been with her was a lie. Hughes was convicted of abduction with intent to harm and received a 50-year sentence. Hey, sweetie, wanna play some Candyland? No, I don't want to play some Candyland. What is this?